Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about chicken breeds and which is the best and worst for your backyard chickens. So we'll be rating the eight breeds that we picked based on attitude and temperament, egg laying ability, ease of care, heat and cold tolerance, as well as ability to use as a meat or a dual purpose bird. So if you have any questions about any of these breeds, make sure to put your comment or your question below in the description and I promise I will get back to you. <laughs> Also, be sure to click the subscribe button below and turn on bell notifications so you're notified each and every time our videos do come out each week. So the first chicken we're gonna look at is a really cool one and it's a quite popular one, but it's the Silky Chicken. So first of all, this chicken gets a 3.5 out of five stars for their attitude or temperament. They are easy to handle and friendly, but can sometimes have an attitude and may not be the best for children, hence the 3.5 out of five. Their egg score is only a 2.5 out of five, and that's just because they only lay like two to three eggs a week, even though they're a cool like cream colored egg. So as far as care or ease of care, the Silky got a two out of five, and there's really two reasons for this. First is that this breed has feathers on their feet, so they can be difficult to keep clean and to keep disease free and all that stuff. So that's part of the reason for the two out of five. And the other is that they are not wet or waterproof. So they, uh, if they get wet, they have to be dried off. And so they're not really good for wet climates. So they can be a lot of work sometimes if you do get a lot of rain or moisture. They did get a four out of five for their heat and cold tolerance score though. That's uh, because they are actually very cold hardy and somewhat heat hardy or heat uh, tolerant, but not incredibly. So four to five for the heat cold tolerance. So finally for their meat score, they got a three out of five and that's because while they do have really good dark meat on their bodies, uh, they are not very big so they don't provide a ton of it for eating. So in general, this got the lowest out of all of our breeds and that's a 15 out of 25. So our second chicken we're gonna look at is the Moran. This is a cool bird and the attitude score of this bird got a four out of five. That's because they're sweet, intelligent, docile, and, and very easily handled. For the egg score of the Morans, they got a three out of five and that's only because they only lay typically three eggs a week compared to the four or five as some of the other breeds we'll look at here today. The cool part about their eggs though is they're like a dark chocolate brown egg, which is pretty cool. For ease of care, they did receive a four out of five because they're pretty straightforward, nothing special. Uh, they're very easy to take care of. Uh, yep, so four out of five for that. For their heat cold tolerances, they did get a three out of five, kind of like the Silkies because they are very cold hardy, but they are not very tolerant of heat. So, so finally for the Moran, they got a three out of five score for their meat. And that's because while they can grow a lot of meat and it grow to a decent size, it takes them about twice as long as commercial broilers do to reach that size. So all in all, that gave the Morans a 17 out of 25. So not terrible, they are a cool breed, but uh, not the best for a uh, beginner chicken owner. <laughs> so we'll move on to our third chicken, the Easter Egger. This is a cool one. So this is actually a mutt of a breed. So they combine a bunch of different features of chickens to kind of get this breed. Um, and the two main features you'll see of this Easter Egger is they have muffs kind of below their eyes on the sides of their faces. And they also lay a rainbow of colors of, of eggs. So they're a pretty cool breed. So for attitude, the Easter Eggers got a four out of five uh, because they are friendly and docile, but they can be a little crazy sometimes. And uh, so uh, they got docked just a, a touch for that. The Easter Eggers did get a four out of five for their eggs because they do lay about four eggs a week, which is about average for everything here. Uh, the cool part is like I mentioned before, they do have a rainbow of colors of eggs that they do lay though. For care, they got a four out of five because there's nothing notable for bad or for worse uh, for this breed. For heat, cold, the Easter Egger actually got the first five out of five because they are actually very cold hardy and very heat hardy. We actually owned a bunch of these when we lived in Phoenix and then we brought them out here where it's actually a lot colder, it's kind of the opposite. So uh, yeah, I can definitely tell you that that one's true. The only thing that this scored really poorly in and it really affected the total score was the meat score. It's a one out of five. So while the meat doesn't taste bad on these birds, these birds tend to be very petite and very small. So the carcasses are not gonna be very big and not gonna provide a lot of meat. So uh, definitely these are good for eggs, not meat though. So in total, the Easter Eggers got an 18 out of 25 and that's mostly because of that meat, but they're actually really cool chickens uh, and those eggs are a lot of fun. Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment and talk about something really exciting coming up and that is we are having our first channel giveaway. Yes, that is right. So if you click the link below in the description and follow the instructions, you can be entered into a giveaway. We're gonna give away first prize is a sweet sweatshirt like this and we'll get your size and color preferences as well as a second place winner will get a free coffee mug. 
So make sure to follow the link below in the description to get your entries in because this giveaway only lasts till the end of March and we're gonna announce our winner in the first video in April. So our fourth chicken in the lineup here today is the Speckled Sussex. Not only is that kind of fun to say, but uh, the attitude and temperament score of these guys got a four out of five. That's because this is a curious and mild-mannered bird that will actually follow you or any sort of alpha uh, around the yard and they're actually kind of fun to have around. I don't have one, but I've seen them quite a bit and uh, have gotten familiar with them getting ready for this video and they look really cool. For their egg score, they did get a four out of five. That's because they do lay four eggs a week, if you see a trend here. <laughs> uh, and they're a light brown color. They're actually uh, really good egg layers uh, right on average. Also, the Speckled Sussex did receive a four out of five for care because like a few of the other breeds here, there's nothing special about them. They don't need any special care. Uh, they're fairly easy to take care of. Uh, this breed, like a few others, got a three out of five because while they're very cold hardy, they are not tolerant to heat. So you gotta make sure to keep them away from hot environments. So that's why they got the three out of five. So for meat, they got a 3.5 out of five. Uh, and that's because while they can be a decent size, it does take them a little bit longer to grow and to mature. So you're gonna be spending a little bit more on food and have them around for a little bit longer while you're waiting to butcher them. So all in all, the speckled Sussex got an 18.5 out of 25, uh, making it our fifth best chicken. Our fifth chicken in the lineup today is actually gonna be the Well Summer Chicken. We have uh, one of these at, at our home here and they're awesome. So this is a fun breed that's calm, sweet, and supposedly really good with children. And so for those reasons, we gave it a four out of five on their attitude score. The Well Summer received a 3.5 out of five because they do lay between three and four eggs a week on average. For care, just like before, this one got a four out of five because there's nothing special or uh, different about this. It's a pretty standard care uh, for a chicken. So the Well Summer, like the Easter Egger, got a five out of five in heat cold tolerances because not only are they very cold hardy, but they can also handle heat very well. And we found that out because we had a Well Summer in Phoenix as well as out here in California. So for meat, the Well Summer got a 3.5 out of five and that's because while they do produce good meat, uh, their carcasses are not very big. They're on the smaller side. So uh, you just won't get a, a whole lot of meat no matter how long you let them mature and grow. So in total, the Wellsmer got a 20 out of 25, making it our fourth place uh, chicken. So it's a really good chicken, especially uh, kids, but uh, we got three more that I think I, I like a lot better. So starting to round out the top three here, and that is gonna be the Bard Rock. This is a very popular chicken for very good reasons. So the Bard Rock got a four out of five on their attitude score uh, because they're sweet, inquisitive, and just a little quirky. They're pretty fun. But they're also friendly and really good with kids. Um, and for better or worse, they are known to being talkative. So if you live in a neighborhood, that might not be best, hence the four out of five score. For eggs, the Bard Rock received a four out of five uh, because as you guessed it, they lay about four eggs a week. So they're pretty good egg layers. The Bard Rock received actually a five out of five for ease of care. And that's because they are very simple, very clean, very good and easy to take care of birds. Also the Bard Rock, like a couple of others that we've talked about today, received a five out of five for their heat and cold tolerance. That's because this chicken will actually handle heat and cold very well uh, compared to a lot of other breeds. Finally, uh, they did receive a four out of five for their meat score because while they can produce a lot of meat that is very good, it can take them just a little bit longer than normal to do that, typically around 16 weeks of age uh, for butchering. So in total, the Bard Rock received a 22 out of 25 points, which is pretty good, and that makes it our third best chicken on the list. So our second best chicken, the Orpington, is actually tied for first place. This Orpington chicken comes in multiple different colors and uh, varieties, including the Lavender Orpington as well as the Buff Orpington. This chicken got a five out of five for their attitude score because they're very sweet, docile, patient, and they're great with kids. They also can go broody fairly often, so they're a really good mother hen and can help naturally incubate your eggs uh, if you leave them out in the coop. The Orpington also received a five out of five for their egg laying ability, and that's because, as you guessed it, they lay about five eggs a week. So they're one of the more prolific egg layers and they're really known for that. For care, just like the last one, they received out of five out of five because they're super easy to take care of. There's nothing special to know about them and they're very clean animals. So uh, for chickens at least. <laughs> so uh, five out of five. So for heat cold tolerances, they got a four out of five. That's because they're very cold tolerant and they're fairly heat tolerant. They will handle some heat, but they're probably not the best for places like Phoenix or uh, Southern Arizona, Texas, where it gets into the 110s, 100s. 
For meat, the Orpingtons got a four out of five on their score because they are one of the most popular meat birds uh, out there. And they have a, a decent sized carcass on them. They're not perfect for it, but they're pretty good uh, for the being a dual purpose birds, hence the four out of five. So in total, the Orpington got a 23 out of 25 on the uh, scoring system, making it tied for first place with our next chicken. Finally, tied with the Orpington is one of the most famous outdoor chicken breeds that there is out there, and that is the Rhode Island Red. So the only score out of all of this that the Rhode Island Red did not get a five out of five, and that is their attitude. And that's because while they are a good and calm bird with a good temperament, um, they have had tendencies in the past and have rumored to have tendencies of being slightly aggressive. We have had them before and still do, and we have not seen that in ours, but I've read that in a lot of different places, hence the three out of five. For eggs, they got the five out of five because they are a very prolific egg layer and lay on average about five eggs a week. For care, same thing, five out of five, because they're very easy to take care of, uh, no special needs, uh, and they're clean for chickens. For heat cold tolerances, they got a five out of five again, because while they are very cold tolerant, like most all these chickens, uh, they're also very heat tolerant and do very well. This, like the Well Summers and the East Riggers, we have had both of them here in California where it has gotten cold this winter. Uh, we had them in Phoenix where it gets really hot and they did very well. For me, they got a five out of five because they are a very heavy bird, big carcass, and very good meat. This is, the Rhode Island Red is basically known for being the dual purpose bird. So in total, the Rhode Island Red got a 23 out of 25 uh, for uh, everything, meaning they are tied with Orpingtons and both of those are very good breeds and I recommend them to any beginning chicken owner. So in closing, all of these breeds have their purpose. You know, like if someone really wants just some cool chickens and they have some time and, and know a little bit about chickens, go ahead and get the silkies. If they really just don't care about the number of eggs, but they want colored eggs that are cool, get the East Riggers. Um, you know, taking into account their, you know, heat, cold tolerances, all of that stuff, uh, they all have their own factor and their own place. But if you're looking to get started and looking for easy use, you know, all of the different categories, best overall, I would definitely try and stick to the Orpingtons or the Rhode Island Reds. They're both very good breeds to start with and I have no complaints about any of them. So once again, thank you guys for joining us. Make sure to check out the links below for the giveaway and get registered for that and uh, get as many entries as possible before the deadline at the end of the month. And also make sure to check our link to our merch store where we've got our sweatshirts in stock as well as our coffee cups.